Happening now at 6. New video of an Ocean City man's heroism. Leaping to the rescue. A toddler ejected during a crash into the water below. The people on that pontoon boat now speaking to 7 News. Stormwatch 7 tracking showers and storms. A brand new future cast just came in. I'll have the timing for you. Also new at 6, could this ear-piercing noise soon be silenced? 7 on your side with a new push to ban certain leaf blowers. Breaking news is first at 6. We are working to learn more about a security incident that has the main gate to the CIA headquarters in McLean shut down. 7 News' is Justin Hinton joins us live now with the new information. Justin? Yeah, that's right, Michelle. We just learned from the CIA that there is a person on the property, and that is what has led to the security situation here at CIA headquarters in McLean. Now, that person tells me that the person that is on the property is not in the secure perimeter, but they are on the property. Again, this unfolded right around 9 o'clock this morning. About two hours ago, this road was blocked off. This is the intersection of 123 and 193, and it stretches for about two and a half miles down to Kirby Road. That section is blocked off at this hour. I tried to ask, is this a standoff situation? Is this a barricaded individual? A CIA spokesperson would not confirm either of those, but simply said this is a security situation. So that is the latest from McLean. Justin Hinton, 7 News. Just into the Stormwatch 7 Weather Center, we have an update on the severe thunderstorm warning that I told you about earlier. It has now been expanded to include sections here of Berkeley and Jefferson County. It's just in the northern part of Frederick County, Virginia. This is south of you guys in Martinsburg. There are a couple of cloud to ground lightning strikes, but our biggest threat is the gusty winds to 60 miles per hour. So a quick track for you takes it off to the east Charlestown right around 627. If it holds together, Frederick County or Frederick, Maryland could be around seven o'clock. I'm monitoring it closely. Have another update for you in just a few minutes. All right, Bill, thanks. And all new at six o'clock, we're hearing now from some of the heroes who raced to help after this terrifying crash here behind me. Both these cars, the truck and the car were absolutely yes. mangled. And then a toddler, it sent the toddler off of a bridge and into the water near Ocean City. Talk about a stunning chain of events here. Within Ooh. seconds, a bystander then dove in and saved that little girl. All new at six, we're hearing from the people who pull that man and the child onto their boat. 7 News' Maryland Bureau Chief Brad Bell joining us live now from where this all happened. Brad, a wild day out there. A, a wild day yesterday and an incredible story. People doing really remarkable things all the way around. It did happen on this bridge. The Route 90 bridge goes into Ocean City at about 60th Street. You can see that the bridge rises up to a peak. About halfway up to the peak is where it happened. This crash happening, the man seeing the baby thrown overboard, and he jumped in after her. And fortunately, the Ortel family was down below waiting to rescue them. In this video taken by another boater, you can see the Ortel family on their pontoon boat. On the Route 90 bridge to Ocean City above them, a terrible crash had just happened. They could see a pickup truck teetering on the guardrail, and that is when they saw something in the water, a man holding a baby girl. I saw the red of his shirt and the, the infant, she had a little um, pink dress thing on, and um, that's when we realized that it was people and that changed everything. I mean, Ooh, our heart, heart dropped and, you know, you just go right into a different mode. You just, you, you, you step it up at that point. You can see in the video, the man handing that child up onto the Ortel's boat. My mom handed the baby off to him and I grabbed the blanket, wrapped it around her. They'd soon learn of the heroic act which led up to that moment. That 18 month old girl had been ejected from that crashed pickup truck thrown through the back window, falling 25 to 30 feet into the water below. The Ocean City Fire Chief says that is when the man in the red shirt summoned the courage to do what had to be done. Without regard for uh, this person and this individual's own safety, uh, this individual exited a vehicle, jumped over the side of the uh, bridge embankment, and landing in about four or five feet of water to rescue this 18 month old baby that was to the best of our knowledge uh floating face down in the water on that boat racing to meet paramedics the ortels say the man didn't say much but joe ortel calls him a hero he was stoic you know he was he was rattled um but you know he was he, he was under control he knew what was going on and what had just happened 
And Mr. Ortel said as they sped away from the scene to go to a marina to meet paramedics, the man actually had the presence of mind to yell up to a family member still on the bridge that he would be right back. That man for now wanting to remain anonymous. A lot of people down here want to do something for him. They are calling him a hero. And the little girl, the 18-month-old girl, the Ortel said that she was crying when she came on board, spitting out a little bit of water. Uh, all we're getting about her condition is that she is still hospitalized, but improving in Ocean City. Brad Bell, 7 News. Well, that's certainly reassuring to hear. Thank you so much, Brad. And right now on WGLA.com, you will find that rescue video as well as the images of that crash. I also shared it on my Facebook page, so go to TV Michelle Marsh. You'll see it there. As for the crash itself, Brad says in all eight people were injured, but at this hour, all but that little girl are out of the hospital. 7 News will keep tracking her condition. John? Well, Michelle, just in tonight, 7 News now is giving you the first look at a drag race that totaled two D.C. police cars. Now, the crash, as you see, was caught on body-worn camera. We should note, though, the video starts with no audio. <laughs> Again, these were squad cars, police cars. 7 News' is Nick Minock, he's at the 7 News Alert Desk with new information on those officers. Yeah. Nick? Well, this all happened on Anacostia Avenue Northeast on April 22nd. Take a look at this video again. This body cam video shows officers engaging in what the MPD is calling reckless driving. This MPD cruiser collided with another MPD patrol vehicle. All four officers report minor injuries. Now, D.C. Pol police say one of the officers was fired after the incident. That officer was on probationary period. And MPD says the remaining three officers have been found to have engaged in misconduct and will be subject to discipline and possibly termination. The acting chief called this unacceptable. And right now, this incident is pending review by the Office of Attorney General. At the alert desk, Nick Minock, 7 News. Well, tonight's D.C.'s police chief says a seven-year-old girl shot over the weekend is able to sit up and watch TV. He calls that very encouraging. Police believe the girl was caught in the crossfire as she rode a scooter on J Street Northeast on Saturday night. So far, police have not made any arrests. The acting chief says someone knows who is responsible. The phone should be ringing off the hook right now as a result of what happened over there uh, with that seven-year-old that got shot. That update comes as D.C. police launch their summer crime initiative, which will increase patrols in six communities that have seen an increase in crimes. The chief called that shooting an example of why action is needed. By the way, tomorrow we could finally drop the word acting from Chief Conti's title. The D.C. Council is expected to vote on his confirmation four months after he took over the job. A fight is brewing tonight over a common yard tool. 7 News is on your side tracking the push to ban leaf blowers. And all new at 6, 7 News is on your side with the plan to slow traffic down to just 35 miles per hour on parts of I-95 in Virginia. New at 6, 7 News is on your side with a plan to change the speed limit on I-95 in Virginia to get this as little as 35 miles per hour, depending on the amount of traffic. VDOT says it is starting work right now, installing variable speed limit signs on northbound lanes from Caroline to Spotsylvania counties just south of Fredericksburg. Now that would allow them to slow traffic down ahead of the work zone areas for the I-95 express lanes. Those new speed signs should be active sometime this fall. And new at 6 o'clock, the University of D.C. now is joining the list of local colleges that's going to require the COVID-19 vaccine. They're going to do it this fall. And anybody who goes on campus, you're going to need that vaccine, including students and staff. The University of Maryland system, Georgetown, George Washington, and American University are also requiring students to be vaccinated. Hospitality workers in D.C., they got the chance to get the vaccination today. The mayor's office of Nightlife and Cultural, they partnered with D.C. Health to offer up free vaccines at the gathering spot. Hook Hall, specifically for hospitality workers living in D.C., who were especially hit financially hard during this pandemic. We just learned Maryland's governor is going to update his state's vaccination plan tomorrow. That news coming just hours after he announced a plan to give state employees $100 to get the shots. And all new at 6. It's just acoustic trash. 
The brewing battle over leaf blowers. Seven News on your side breaking down the call for a ban that is now getting pushback from those who call them essential. Well, all new at 6 o'clock, 7 News on your side now tracking a growing movement to ban gas-powered leaf blowers in our area. Critics say they damage hearing and the environment, but supporters say they're efficient and cost-saving. 7 News on your side's Jay Korf is tracking this front yard fight. Everything is green and growing, and we just want things to look nice in the neighborhood. Beverly McDonald loves her handheld gas-powered leaf blower. This is easy to start, and it blows it fast, and I'm done. And delights in using her neighbor's larger backpack model. The industrial one is like the big high grade. It is noisier compared to my little putt-putt. Two-stroke gas-powered leaf blowers are popular because they're light, affordable, and powerful. Some produce wind speeds that top 200 miles per hour. Eden Ramos with Holy Land Landscaping says gas-powered leaf blowers are lightning fast. First of all, they are efficient. Allowing his team to work more jobs. The old ones make more noisy than the new ones. But the louder models are the bane of Avril Garland's existence. It's just acoustic trash. Garland belongs to Quiet Clean Nova, a new group lobbying Virginia lawmakers to ban gas-powered leaf blowers calling them noise and air polluters. Oh my God, the, em the emissions are staggering. According to the California Air Resources Board, your typical gas-powered leaf blower releases exponentially more pollution than your typical gas-powered car. And the CDC tells 7 News on your side that 85 decibels of extended exposure can cause hearing loss. While newer models tend to be below that mark, many older models operate near 90 decibels some even higher. It will penetrate walls of a house. You can hear it in your bedroom. Mike Christensen is among those leading this fight. It's uh, profitable, but you have to look at the health side and you have to look at the environmental side. It's not good for nature and it's not good for people. In fact, cities across the country are banning these machines. D.C. and Chevy Chase Village will do so in 2022. Montgomery County leaders tell me that they'll soon push legislation curtailing them as well. It's painful when you're close to it. And state delegate Kay Corey of Falls Church says she'll push legislation this fall, encouraging the use of electric and battery-powered blowers in Virginia, which are considerably quieter. It's not like anybody who's talking about this is talking about getting rid of leaf blowers. Although, there is such a thing as raking. And that's exactly how Beverly McDonald finished up her day of yard work. The hardest part of yard work is the cleanup. Jay Corf. 7 News. 7 News is on your side with a quick break, a quick breakdown of those upcoming bans that Jay mentioned. The bans take effect in Chevy Chase and the district on January 1st of next year. In the district, a violation could lead to a fine of up to $500. In Chevy Chase, it would be a $100 fine. You'll find those ordinances in Jay's story on WJLA.com right now. There you'll also find studies on the effects of leaf blowers and what the National Association of Landscape Professionals has to say about all of this. Mm. I know both Bill and I have leaf blowers. We just usually wear headphones, but you do have to be sensitive. You don't want to start that thing up. It's Sunday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. And you don't want anyone close by. <laughs> no. Today, probably not the day to go out there and do it not because a good of the day. weather. No. And you got the no, serious one, man. You got the big backpack. <laughs> well, I got both, actually. I have the gas and the electric. Just depends on the job I'm going to do. So, yeah, I, I could not live without my gas blower. I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> but I, I also have a lot of property. It, the, the other one's just not enough for me. All right, so the Hagerstown is what we're looking at. Some heavy rainfall. Want to give you an update on our severe thunderstorm warning. Zoom on down. The National Weather Service has tailored it back a little bit. It's now, this is Interstate 81. It is now to the east of I-81. This is down into Berkeley County and into Jefferson County. Now pretty much only in Jefferson County right now. It's Middleway, Route 51, right up toward the Egypt and the line with Frederick County, Maryland. And notice that it is moving off to the east at roughly 20 25 miles per hour. So I did put an updated track on here for you. So say Sandy Hook, same thing at Harper's Ferry. That'd be right around, say, 640. Braddock at 655. If it holds together, Frederick, Maryland, right around 7 o'clock. So we're watching this. Some gusty winds with this. Uh, up to about 60 miles per hour. There are more showers and storms that are back to the west in through the panhandle. We're going to watch those move across the region or at least 
through sections of Hardy County, Mineral, Hampshire, places like that. Also new right now, a new storm has developed moving out of Fauquier County into Prince William and down into Southern Maryland as well. We're going to continue to see these pop up showers and thunderstorms over the next several hours. We'll watch it very closely. I don't expect widespread severe thunderstorm warnings, but certainly we have those pockets. And when we do, we will update the crawl on, on your screen. Of course, your Stormwatch 7 weather app will alert you if you have your notifications on. And we'll keep this in there through at least midnight tonight. Notice 10 o'clock. We're still going to be tracking some of these. Once we hit midnight, Things will wind down and I expect them to, you know, completely end and be gone by tomorrow morning. We start out with some areas of fog. Otherwise, we got a lot of sunshine out there in the first half of your day is looking dry. It will be a sticky day. It will be a warm day. It may be hot for this time of year. Some increasing clouds and by tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening will repeat the process and bring in the potential for more showers and more thunderstorms. I actually see our severe weather threat a little greater tomorrow, so we'll watch it very closely. But outside this evening, get a little bit of a break in the cloud cover that will help fuel some storms. It's going to be off and on showers tonight, so have your umbrella with you. It's warm. It is uh, sticky, and that's going to be the trend tomorrow. 85 degrees by the afternoon, and then by Wednesday, the cold front moves through, so not as warm, but we're going to be watching a big cool down for Thursday and Friday. So the short term forecast for us, strong storms again tomorrow, mainly during the evening time and into early Wednesday morning, dry Thursday, some rain showers Friday and dry er, and tracking some showers here on your Mother's Day. Scott, over to you. And now the Toyota Sports Desk, sponsored by your Toyota dealers. New tonight, the Rivera family paying it forward. Ron and Stephanie Rivera writing a $100,000 check to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And just a short time ago, I had a fantastic one-on-one -on -one conversation with Coach Rivera about the big donation. Listen, this is very personal for Ron. Remember, last year he battled and beat cancer. The donation was part of the Run Rich Run 40-yard dash challenge, but Rivera decided to enlist some help from Tahoe, the family dog. Ron telling me why this cause is so important. I, I, I really believe one of the most humbling experiences you can have as a cancer patient is to sit in the waiting room and see everybody that, are, that is getting treatment as well. And, and at that point, it doesn't matter who you are. You're, you're a patient and they treat you all the same with, with tremendous amount of compassion and dignity. Now with your video, I, I did notice you had a stand in uh, for your 40. So uh, Tahoe taking your place. Uh, what's the deal with that, Ron? Well, I'm still in recovery. Okay. So there's no okay. way I could have run a 40 because I promise you I would have probably pulled every muscle in my hamstrings. <laughs> Yeah, Ron, that sounds like a smart decision. And Tahoe was pretty fast, too. You can watch my entire interview with Ron Rivera, including the reason why the team did not select a quarterback in the NFL draft. That's up on our website right now, wjla.com slash sports. Also, team owners Dan and Tanya Snyder matching the Rivera's donation, so a total of $200,000 going to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Some good stuff there, Jonathan. That, that is wonderful. And Tahoe is a cutie pie. All right, Scott, thanks. All new tonight, a raccoon rescue caught on camera in Silver Spring. Uh, the update just in on this little guy, oh, who got stuck four stories up. All right, stop and take a look at this. All new images from Silver Spring showing the daring rescue of a raccoon. Montgomery County Animal Services say he climbed a building but got stuck four stories up. So that's when firefighters were called in to give him a hand in the form of a net. Once on the ground, vets gave him a quick checkup and he was released back into the wild. He looks so scared about what yes. happened. <laughs> <laughs> good, good stuff. Hey, just into the Stormwatch 7 Weather Center, a severe weather report here uh, just to the east of Interstate 81 where a tree down on a trailer on Fabric Drive, and that is in, we have a tornado warning. Uh, guys, they is just issued a tornado warning, so why don't we just stay on here and see what is going on here. All right, so there is a new tornado warning that is in effect in the same area that we have the severe thunderstorm at. So while we're looking at that, let me put the information on the screen for you. And I am going to get my desk, which I just have right over here so we can talk about it. Tornado warning in effect here. This is in, looks like, parts of Jefferson County until 7 o'clock tonight. I'm going to move my computer on over so I can give you the information and all the latest, and we will track 
the uh, National Hurric the uh, National Weather Service as well and give you all the info on this. All right, so here's what we are looking at at this time, and it just clicked off of here, so it's going to reconnect. Stand by. Give me one second. But we do have a tornado warning that is in effect, and this is until Monday at 7 o'clock tonight. Charlestown, you guys are in this warning right now. I'm going to put the uh, radar on here for you. And just This is in West Virginia, by the way. Thank you for that. This is in West Virginia. Moving on in. Let me give you the wider view since it just popped in. Okay, if you're just joining us here to watch World News Tonight with David Muir, we're going to stay on for a moment because we do have a tornado warning in effect just issued from the National Weather Service for Jefferson County, West Virginia. So let me put the radar on for you, and then we're going to track this out for you in just a moment. I'm going to put this into motion. This is moving at roughly 25 miles per hour. And earlier I was tracking this and we were showing you some of that rotation and it definitely has been showing signs of the rotation. And what I'm looking at right now, let me set the stage for you. This is the panhandle of West Virginia. Here's Interstate 81. You got Martinsburg. This is Frederick County, Virginia, Winchester off to the south and just a little bit wider for those of you that maybe aren't in this area. Let me give you a little bit of a, of a broader picture. Here's Hagerstown up to the north. This is West Virginia, Jefferson County. Part of Frederick County, Maryland is also in this warning. Not the city of Frederick right now, but right here. So this would be Sandy Hook. Harper's Ferry is in this warning. And we're going to watch this one very closely. Let me track this out for you because I'm a little concerned with the shape of this storm. So we're going to do a couple things. I'm going to go back to the rotation like we talked about before. And what this is, this is the radar looking into the storm itself and where you see the greens and the reds together, that is where there is rotation. So if you are in this area, Charlestown, you need to take your tornado precautions now. I want you to get into the lowest level of your house. If you don't have a basement, specifically the basement, if you don't have a basement, I want you to get into the center part of your, of your house. Picture as many walls between you and the outside as possible. There is definitely some rotation on this storm right here just to the north of Charlestown. And if I get in really tight for you, this certainly, here's Jefferson Village. Here's Charlestown, Route 115 and 51, of course, you folks that live here know. This rotation is just north of Charlestown, south of Jefferson Village. And when I look at these, it, this definitely has signs of that what's called tight coupling. I'm not going to get a bunch of scientific words there for you, but it shows that I think that there's a very good chance that we have the tornado on the ground. I'm going to step over here real quick, and I'm going to grab the chat that I already have up, then monitoring it with the national, the our local National Weather Service. So I'm going to see. That way, if there's any updated information, I can then get it for you right away. What they're saying about this warning, it is a radar-indicated warning. Here it is, and we're going to watch another scan as it comes through. We'll get a bit, a bit of a better look here. This is a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. Again, radar indicated uh, versus they had an emergency manager or National Weather Service employee call in and visually see. But either way, there's Bardane just off to the south. You want to take your precautions in this area. Get to the center part of your house. I always like to err on the side of caution with these things. And sometimes, truth be told, and I've said this to you guys before, the National Weather Service will issue these warnings, and I'm just not quite seeing what they're seeing. This is one that I definitely agree with, for sure, just looking at this radar, because where you have these bright shades of green next to the dark shades of red, that's basically winds going in two very different directions, and that's what indicates that rotation. And when I track this out for you, um, it's moving at about 25 miles per hour, and we've been telling you about that uh, over the last hour. So if I take just where I'm looking at that rotation, I'm going to extend this on out for, let's go out for about an hour or so and just give a general gauge. So Charlestown now, that's where we're covering you. Uh, Boulevard, that's right around 646, so another, say, 13 minutes or so for you guys. Sandy Hook, uh, I'm also going to put... Uh, right here, Harper's Ferry, uh, which is just, of course, you guys know Harper's Ferry, just off to the corner there of Jefferson County, probably along the same time frame as Sandy Hook, 650. Uh, Brunswick, right around 702. Now we're starting to move into Frederick County, Maryland. Jefferson at 715. Buckystown, right around 727. This would put it closer to Frederick, uh, probably around that 730 time frame or so. Again, if it holds together, here's the bigger picture, and you can see that. Uh, in there. 
If you're just now joining us, uh, we are going to stay on the air with this tornado warning. If you want to watch World News Tonight, that's why we are on the air right now covering because we have a potentially uh, dangerous situation uh, going on in West Virginia right now. So let's go back. I want to uh, let's go back and look at the radar. A couple things to put on. I'm going to actually animate this for just a moment here. And what we've been watching is a storm that's moving from the west to the east at about 25 miles per hour. It has some cloud to ground lightning. It's not a, a hugely electrified storm, and that's because it's not a real tall storm. But there are now signs or at least indications or, or uh, uh, it has been sensed that there are cloud to ground lightning strikes. But there's also been rotation with this along the way. We have damage reports that have come in. I showed you the one there in Berkeley County in Ridgeway where we had a report of downed trees. This is a new one actually just came down. This is a report of downed trees and a structure collapse near McGlynn Lane. That's in Berkeley County. That report just came down. And before that, we had the other report of a tree down on a trailer on Fabric Drive. That also in Berkeley County around Ridgeway. So definitely some damage that that was in the Ridgeway area. Of course, that's just off to the west here of Middleway over Interstate 81. So that's why we're covering this. It has a history of damage. It's certainly showing signs of rotation. And that's why we're going to watch this as it makes its way from the west to the east. So again, there's Charlestown. You folks in Charlestown specifically, you're just south of the storm. I don't want your guard down, but you're becoming more and more likely in a safe area but up to the north angle get in your uh take your tornado precautions right now if you live north of blair right around route 230 i know it's a very rural area there's a lot of uh you know farms and fields out in this area but you know there are a lot of people that still live here so i want you to get that word out this is where we have uh that tornado warning that's in effect i'm going to draw it a little bit farther to the east and i'm keeping it tight here i'm, I'm not going to widen this out i really want to show you some of these areas here's sandy hook this is the Potomac River. Of course, I mentioned Harper's Ferry before along 340. It's right here. You guys are probably going to be south of that. Sandy Hook, same thing. But up into Samples Manor, I, I certainly don't want your guard down in this area, but we're going to watch that. I'm going to track it for you. And then we continue to work our way along 340. We head over into Brunswick, Petersville, Burkittsville, all of these places. If I'm mentioning your city, uh, I want you to take this serious. I want you to take your tornado precautions. And whenever you hear that sound, by the way, it's an update. Uh, and the National Weather Service uh, has a severe thunderstorm warning that's also out with a tornado possible, which has been their language uh, that they have just with this as well. So they have the tornado warning that's in effect in this area that's in the red up until 7 o'clock at this point. Let me actually put this on with the radar so you can see. And then they have a severe thunderstorm warning you know, within it as well. I, I don't want you, that can get kind of confusing. If you're just in this area, anywhere within this box, I want you to take it serious. So now this, the new one has extended. It's into Loudoun County as well as we drape down on the southern edge. However, I, I don't see that as a, a big area where there's going to be a huge threat. And here's why. I'm going to put the radar, take off the, the language. I'm going to put this into motion. Let's take it back over the last 30 minutes. And you can see how this thing is traveling. Moving pretty slowly. So heavy rain certainly going to be uh, likely with this as well. But this is moving off to the east and slightly northeast, but almost, almost due east, as I mentioned, about 25 miles per hour. And if you notice here on these last couple of frames, you see how you get this little like wrap around right here. And there's a new one that just came in and it's filled in. The filled in is, is a little bit of a, of a better sign uh, in terms of not as uh, tornadic looking, so to speak. Uh, but certainly heavy rainfall and within this it also means most likely that if there is rotation if there is a tornado on the ground because again this is radar indicated I do not see any reports at this point that there has been a viewed tornado and you folks listening in the in the booth or at the desk if you get reports if you're hearing it on on the chat from the emergency manager of course sheriff's office please let me know and I'll get that information out uh, but right now it's just radar indicated uh, but you know it, it could be rain wrapped and what I mean by that is it's it's not going to be uh, one of those things that you can actually see and it's crystal clear with the exception of that funnel that's coming down. It's certainly possible that it's just heavy rain and there's a tornado within that heavy rain uh, that you're not seeing. And that's where it can really uh, get you where it just goes from nothing to all of a sudden, you know, winds up to whatever they would be 60, 80, 100 miles per hour. And then you're talking about situations where you and your family uh, could be could be harmed. And so that's why I want you to take it very seriously. I'm going to go back now that we've had a couple of new scans. Let's go back and look at 
uh, that rotation, the it's called velocity, but what we're really looking at is where the winds are moving different directions. So the radar sees particles in the air, rain or hail or, or whatever, birds, whatnot. But it also sees the direct, it, it can pinpoint the direction or indicate the direction. And what's a little bit concerning about this velocity signature here, this velocity data, is you have this area of green right next to areas of red. And that is where you have winds that are going in different direction. Now the radar itself is off to the south. So when you're looking at these areas of red, they are moving away from the, the winds are moving away from the radar. So here you're going to get winds moving like that, moving away from the radar. But when you see areas of, that are opposite colors, that means you have strong winds that are going like that. And that is what we look for. Again, if you're just joining us, here's uh, Route 51. This is Charlestown. You folks in Charlestown, you're most likely, other than some winds out of the back end of this, I would not uh, see you in a, in a tornadic situation right now. It's off to the north, but it's very close, so, so remain uh, where you are. But this is what we're going to be keeping a close eye on, as is the National Weather Service. And that's what I'm tracking out for you. You have a traffic camera, Brian? Where, where, go ahead. Yeah, that's east of Charlestown, route through 340, and if you look at it, you can see that the uh, the lights are swaying around uh, in the wind. It looks like it's a little bit there. Cars just driving around. If you know anybody that are that's on the highways, specifically in this area right here, into Jefferson County, this is the most immediate. I want to get the word out, moving into Frederick County, Maryland. Loudoun County technically is in this. It's the far northwest corner of Loudoun County, not the city uh, of, of Leesburg or anything like that. Loudoun County, for the most part, I think is going to be spared, even though it's in the warning. It's not going to be, there's not going to be much going on, maybe some gusty winds. But here we got the tighter areas where we're looking at, say, 230 or 340, moving into western parts of Frederick County, Maryland. This area, anywhere in here, anywhere that you're seeing in here, is where I want you to uh, make sure you get into the basement. If you don't have a basement, center part of the house as those winds are going to move through. Let, let me give you a real localized area. I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Instead of doing an all-out tracker, I want to use a tool that shows the estimated time away. So it's basically, it's like a, it's like a ruler essentially. So this is moving at 25 miles per hour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sample from where the most recent scan is showing that potential for rotation. And it's a new scan doesn't, I just saw the new one come in here. It's moved a little bit farther to the east. Now the center of that over 230 over angle. Definitely, you know, take this one serious there. So I'm going to take the lines off and let's just use this ruler tool. So over angle right now, I mentioned samples manner. Take this center. That you got about 10 minutes. And again, this is based at a movement, a forward progression at 25 miles per hour. Okay, could fluctuate a little bit here or there. Uh, but roughly 10 minutes. Sandy Hook, we're going we're gonna to move this out right around, same thing, about 10 minutes. But let me give you a warning if this holds together, give you a, a very early heads up for you folks that are farther to the east with this one. So I'm going to move in here and let's start focusing a little bit on Frederick County, Maryland, not Frederick County, Virginia. The storm threat, at least this storm threat, is, is past you guys. And I do not see any new severe thunderstorm warnings uh, that have been issued for you. So there's Roarsville, maybe a little bit farther. You guys may be a little bit farther to the north, but still, I'm going to just draw this along, let's say, Route 67, and, and we'll even push it to 17. So you got about you got about 20 minutes here, okay, 20 minutes. So if you know any kids are playing outside or you have any loved ones that are on the road and they're, they're heading this direction, it's always best to pull off to the side, get into a safe place. Some of the worst places to be when there is a tornado is in a car, in a mobile home. Mobile homes are horrible places to be. You're actually, and you know, I've said this before, you're actually safer to go into a ditch than to be in a mobile home because it just doesn't have the foundation. It's not anchored and it can be picked up just like that, you know, if a tornado rolls through and I, I can't even imagine being in that situation and having to make that choice. But as a meteorologist, meteorologist, I know what it is. Um, let's see. That's just that was just a question. Uh, if they're going to continue the tornado warning, little downstream into Frederick, Maryland, 
uh, a little farther into Frederick. So I'll update you. I'll, I'll let you know what they say here in just a moment. Again, I'm watching the chat here from the National Weather Service. But inside uh, of a building, lowest level of the home, you want to remember winds and more than the winds, the stuff that is in the wind, tree branches, trees maybe for that matter, if it's large enough, uh, rocks, bricks, debris in, in extreme situations, which this may not be that, but extreme situations, you're going to have larger things like vehicles and, and everything. That's obviously extreme, but it does not take much, you know, and I often bring the example, just take a, a, a tennis ball or a baseball. And if I just lobbed it over at you and, and you weren't looking to hit you, it's not a big deal. But if I shot that thing at you at hundred miles an hour, it's a totally different story. And that's, that's what we look at when we're talking about tornadoes. So you want to visualize as many walls between you and the outside, as much protection between you and the outside as possible, because this storm certainly is showing signs of that rotation. They're now getting pretty close to moving out of Jefferson County over the Potomac and into Frederick County, Maryland, uh, or uh, Washington County here, I should say. I've been saying Frederick County, Washington County here, the southern edge, but still into uh, western sections of uh, Frederick County as well. Uh, so we're going to watch this one very closely. At this point, the tornado warning is in effect until 7 o'clock. Yeah, 7 o'clock. Uh, they have not expanded it, but I'd be interested to know from people on the ground out there if there has been any uh, ground uh, sighting of any kind of tornado because there's certainly rotation uh, in the atmosphere. So let me show you uh, again. Let's go back to the radar. I'm going to put the live sweeping radar on. Let me actually keep the warnings on the screen. They're just continuing it here. It's a severe thunderstorm warning capable of producing a tornado or that that's what they're looking at. Located over Harpers Ferry near Shepherdstown moving to the east 25 30 miles per hour. So that's They've actually taken it and they've really fine tuned now where this box is. And we've been telling you about these areas, same here. So, so no updates in terms of, you know, take your tornado precautions seriously. Angle, Samples, uh, Samples Manor, Sandy Hook, Harpers Ferry, near Burkittsville. I will say that you folks in Harpers or in Charlestown and areas back farther to the east are now out of this warned area. So you can uh, go ahead and, and not worry and be in your uh, safe place. It's now moved off to your east. I would highly suggest not, uh, you know, venturing outside and, you know, trying to you know, do all that stuff. I know it's one of those things where you have these severe thunderstorm warnings or tornado warnings. Maybe your Stormwatch 7 weather app alerted you because you had your notifications on, that type of thing. Uh, but I always want, I, I just want you to take these things very seriously, especially ones that have that really solid signature on the radar that there are signs of rotation. I think it is very important. So let me do a fresh track for you. Now that we've you know gone through a little bit of time, I'm going to widen this out a little bit. And what I want to track is just this area that is currently within the warning. Heavy rainfall. The cloud to ground lightning strikes are really not that existent here because the storms themselves are not that tall. But there is just enough spin that we are seeing that potential there uh, for that rotation. So let me use just the overall tracker tool here. Make sure I'm set. 25 to 30. I'm going to sample it right at that front edge there. Now, this isn't when the rain would arrive because as I sample this out, I'm going to draw it past Frederick, Maryland. It's already raining in many spots that's within this cone. What I've sampled is where that rotation is and where the greatest chance for a, a tornado would be. So Augusta, 656 p.m. I got 645 right now on my clock. Petersville, right around 703. All of 707. Jefferson at 713. Braddock at 722, Frederick, Maryland at uh, 730, Bartonsville 736, Walkersville at 741. So if you've heard your city, if I've mentioned your town, or you live you know, anywhere near in any of the, the smaller villages or the smaller uh, communities, the little townships, if you're near any of these, uh, because you know, all, there's a lot of places that are within this, please take this seriously. Please take your tornado precautions. Um, the Storm Prediction Center says there's a slight chance of a severe thunderstorm. Watch. Um, we'll watch that very closely. Another report. Um, there was thunderstorm wind damage now in Jefferson County. That's a brand new report that's just coming in. A structure collapse along the 200 block of 16th Avenue in Ransom, West Virginia. Um, the fact that that is now two structure collapses is alarming. You know, it's one thing to get some gusty winds and have shingles taken off of a roof or even a roof for that matter, like we had on Friday uh, with the high wind warning. As, as you guys know, the tin roof came off of the, um, 
the townhouse. I believe that was Loudoun County. But when you have structure collapse, there's, there's something else going on. Either the structure was poor, because it doesn't tell me what structure it is. Was it made of brick? Was it made of, of old wood? Was it a, a you know, dilapidated place? I don't know that. But I do know that when you see the language of structure structures down, uh, that typically doesn't happen unless there's something seriously going on. And you couple that with the rotation. Um, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like the way that those that those look. And I that just further uh, prompts me to tell you anywhere within this box, you've got to take it seriously. You, you, you really do. Please do. Lowest level of the house. Many walls between you and the outside uh, as possible as we will continue to track this uh, tornado warning. Uh, and you folks who, again, may have just switched on, we're covering this because we do. When there is weather that is life-threatening, we cover it. And so that's why we have uh, done this instead of the World News Tonight with David Muir uh, because we wanted to get you this information out around our area. So all, there's some very heavy rainfall with this as well. I'm going to clear this out, and it could very easily be a situation that there's rotation, there's a tornado, and it's rain wrapped. You're not seeing it as there is some very, very heavy rainfall here. But if we get a little closer, we've now had a couple more scans. Let me go back and look at the velocity data, as it's called. Let's look at that rotation. Maybe we'll get some good news here that it, it's looking a little bit less. And this is a better looking, this is a better looking image, and I, I like this. So the way that this will work is when there is a tornado on the ground, regardless of size, um, when it starts to wind down, what you'll see is you won't just all of a sudden see it gone. You'll generally start to see the colors get a little uh, duller, not so bright, uh, which means the wind speeds are less. But also as the as the tornado's lifting, it just kind of is feathering out a little bit and then it will just turn back into either one shade, which would be in this case the red. Uh, but it will maybe just be a little bit more scattered. And this is a very different look in a positive way than it was even 10 minutes ago. But still, watch, this is the Potomac River on the corner of Washington County and Jefferson County, right on that line there. Um, National Weather Service just in, they say they have no new plans at this time, it seemed to expand the tornado warning. Uh, it seems the threat has diminished for now, so they're seeing exactly what I'm seeing and in, in delivering to you. So we are certainly on the same page, uh, the National Weather Service and at least myself as, as I'm looking at this and delivering information to you. And let me just show you what I mean as I take this back and put this into motion over the last 30 minutes. You can see how bright those colors were uh, going back 30 minutes ago and how as we've gone into the last couple of frames, how the colors, again, have faded out a little bit. They haven't, they're not as tight next to each other little bit more, more kind of fanned out, which would tell me that there's still rotation in this, but the storm in terms of any tornadic potential is coming to an end. And so we will continue to cover this right now. We're going to continue to watch it because there is an active tornado warning in our area. But at this point, and I'm tell, not only telling all of you this, but I'm also telling, of course, the crew and the television station as well. At this point, unless there is something issued, we will go off the air when this is done at 7 o'clock. I'll move into the programming, uh, you know, wheel and jeopardy. But I will say, okay, so that's a new tornado, or excuse me, new severe thunderstorm warning, uh, but tornado possible. That's why you heard that, you know, screeching sound there. And that's for Frederick and Washington. It's not a tornado warning, but it is a new severe thunderstorm warning that now is in the same areas I've been telling you about that I tracked out for you time-wise severe thunderstorm warning in effect where winds could potentially get up to 60 miles per hour but the national weather service has made that choice to not expand the tornado warning but i will say uh, you know i know many of you are watching this right now uh, we have programming throughout the night we will watch it i i think the chance for additional tornado warnings are fairly low fairly low but uh if there is a tornado warning issued the same way we've covered up world news tonight we'll be jumping on the air we'll be talking about it Severe thunderstorm warnings. I'll be on Facebook Live later on this evening and kind of cover it that way as well. So you can you can check out our 7 News Facebook page for some of those. But at this point, that tornado warning, let me just go back and give you another update here. The area that I'm most concerned about, north of Sandy Hook. Uh, here's Samples Manor. Here's Augusta. We're now moving into Washington County. And I'm going to show you. Let's look at a, another scan here. And it continues to look less 
and less as it's now into Washington County. Still some spin, still winds 50, 60 miles per hour possible with this storm, so we're not out of the woods in terms of any damage. Uh, I don't want don't want you to get your guard down there going hey, tornado warning has been lifted. Therefore, it's no big deal uh, because severe thunderstorm warnings are are big deals for sure. And you know, you got tree damage that can occur. Uh, you have just, of course, the, the pelting rain. This is not a hail situation, by the way. The damage with this is going to be either spinning, rotating winds or damaging winds in the form of some straight line winds. Not any hail with this, and it's not the only storm that we have. There's more to the west, more to the south, nowhere near as strong. And also, I want to point out, just as a sidebar, we are talking about at 6 uh, during the newscast, those storms that had developed into southern Maryland, and there was one over uh, Prince William County. That is still there, but it's certainly much less kind of built up and came back down. Uh, but uh, in this one, the winds could be strong, but I wouldn't expect hail. Winds are going to be our primary feature, and I'll show you why real quick. If I scan this, and I was doing this earlier at 5 o'clock, a little bit taller, but these are not tall storms. I mean, these are only at about 15 to 20,000 feet, which in a severe storm situation is not tall at all. This is this is a little super storm cells or super cell uh, thunderstorms. You know, the ones that would produce the humongous, you know, the big EF4 or 5 tornadoes. Those are typically up into the you know, 40,000 foot. They're, they're large storms. And when you get storms that large is where you'll get the lightning, you'll get the hail, you'll get all those other big features, certainly big hail, you're, you're not going to get at all, uh, you know, with 15 or 20,000 foot storms. So these are not, um, these are not uh, hail storms, but winds are potentially going to be a problem for you here. And we're also going to be tracking the uh, rotating possibility uh, as well uh, as we go through the evening. So just want you to take your precautions there. And pretty soon my computer decided that it just, you know, wanted to hiccup for just a moment. So we'll, we'll let it go and hopefully it will come back in, in a second. If it doesn't, I'll see if I can get on there uh, with the other one as well. Uh, but the tornado warning remains in effect for Washington County, but the National Weather Service is going to be lifting that here, as they say, at uh, 7 o'clock. Yeah, let's go. Let me just load it up over here. You go ahead and leave that on the screen. You get, you can keep max one up for a second there. I'm just going to check something out real quick here, Brian. And then, like I said, when let me know here. I'll just do this. Let me know when we uh, want to go back over. I'm just going to move this here, slide this over, and you folks are getting the Definitely the behind the scenes, peeling back the curtain, moving, <laughs> moving stuff around. It happens. Computers, you know, do different things. And sometimes they work, as you all can relate, and sometimes they don't. This one wants to work, so that's nice. Fortunately, I have uh, access to multiple computers here, so I can, you know, be on the air and give you the information. So here's what, again, la last time we're going to tell you this, because I don't think... I don't see the National Weather Service expanding this tornado warning, but as we speak now, we'll move into another part of the story, which are the severe weather reports that continue to roll in. Right now, a new one just came in. It's probably not going to be on this computer yet because it does take a little time for it to populate. But uh, we're talking about the structures that were damaged. Now you got some of these here uh, in Jefferson County and over into Berkeley County as well. That was from earlier. And then as we look here at the overall radar, that storm continues to move off to the east uh, at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. I'm, I'm pleasantly uh, not surprised, but I'm just um, uh, happy that this is looking less and less and that tornado warning uh, will have been lifted here, moving into Washington County. It is an active night, guys, and I will just tell you, uh, we have possibilities like this as we get on into the night tonight that's gonna be there, but also as we go into tomorrow, and uh, as we get on into, uh, can it can't be, well, I don't know why this, it's showing me all kinds of, now, <laughs> now the computer wants me to change my password while I'm live on the air with you, and that's not going to happen, so I wish it would move off my screen. But uh, let me show you what we're doing tonight. We have the marginal risk that's in effect in our area, and then we have that risk. That means an isolated strong, or two, strong storm or two possible. That's around this evening. Okay, the next update on that is going to be about 9 o'clock tonight. So we'll see at 10 and 11 if that changes. I, I imagine the Storm Prediction Center is going to keep it the same. I wouldn't expect them to increase that to the next level, which would be slight. However, with that being said, for tomorrow, we are all in the marginal risk. Everybody. Tonight, certain area. Tomorrow, everybody. And that's tomorrow evening, overnight, and into early Wednesday morning. 
the marginal risk tomorrow I could see being upgraded into that slight risk category, which means scattered severe storms are possible. It's kind of just another notch up the line there. And then we get into Wednesday and we're going to do the same thing again on Wednesday, primarily Wednesday morning, not Wednesday afternoon and evening. Tonight was afternoon evening. Tomorrow is afternoon evening. Wednesday is tomorrow is Wednesday morning. So I want you to know about that for your morning commute time uh, on Wednesday morning. That could be potentially a problem. It's not often we get severe weather during a morning drive. It happens, but certainly far less often than we get it in the afternoon and into the evening hours, mainly due to the heating and the, you know, the ingredients that are out there uh, into the atmosphere. The sun plays a huge role of it. Of course, the lift and all those all those other things. But that's what we're going to be watching for Wednesday. So tonight again, we are in that marginal risk for this evening. As we go into the nighttime tonight, things will continue as we roll through probably 10, 11, maybe even midnight. So we will continue to track this. I really would like love for you to tune on in to 10 o'clock WJLA 24 seven news at 10. That's typically on channel eight. Check your uh, local services. And then of course, seven news here at 11 o'clock. And like I said, if there are any warnings that are Okay, there it is officially. The tornado warning has expired for Washington and Jefferson County. And I'm told that we have a crew that is heading out to this area to look at those damage reports. If you have any damage reports or you have anything that you want to share, you can always hit me up on Facebook or Twitter as well. I'm at Bill Kelly 7 News on Twitter or Bill Kelly Weather on Facebook. Would love to see some of your pictures if you were able to get some safely. But once more, and then we're going to go off the air here so we can go into uh, our next round of, uh, of wheel and jeopardy. Uh, we do have the severe thunderstorm warning that remains in effect for Frederick, Maryland. It does include the city of Frederick, and this is going to be up here until 745, 730 is when that's up. Stormwatch 7 weather app, have that as well. Have your notifications on. Tornado warning has expired. We'll be on the air if we need to. For now, send it back over to program.